welcome everyone. We are excited to have Mr. Dan Milner in the Creative Live house via Skype, that is, um, today. So Dan, welcome. Welcome back to Creative Live. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Well, we're just going to ask you some questions. And uh, before we play what is going to be um, the segment we're going to play here as part of Photo Week Special Edition, uh, but we're going to start out. Just tell us again who you are and what does it mean to be the photographer at large at Blurb? Well, my name is Dan Milner, and I am photographer at large for Blurb, which is actually kind of funny because uh, I've worked for Blurb now for several years, but the title photographer at large was something that the CEO, Eileen Gittens, came up with uh, really at the very beginning stages of me sort of associating with Blurb. And it was, I don't want to say that it was a joke, but it was just kind of like, hey, this would be a really funny title for you, photographer at large. And I literally got a business card in the mail from Blurb and it had the title photographer at large. But the funny part was I never really did any photography for Blurb until about three weeks ago. And really? I, I basically, my job had always been to be a liaison between the photography community and Blurb. But three weeks ago, they approached me and said, hey, would you consider doing some photography for us? And they described what they were looking for. And it is basically a very interesting scenario. I'm, I'm doing basically very classic photo essays about people who live artistic lives who happen to use blurb. So I've started to be a photographer again after a, a several year break. And it's, it's really fun because um, I've got a fairly good amount of creative control and they're allowing me to basically work in whatever way that I need or want to work. And I've got uh, people lined up all across the US and some in Europe and even Australia, it looks like. So it's going to wow. be a fun, uh, fun year. That sounds like an amazing project. That's awesome. It is. It's, it's well, dreamy, congratulations for sure. after <laughs> for the past three weeks. That's fantastic news. Yeah, Let's it's really fun. It's exciting. Let's talk a little bit about uh, your two workshops that you did here, your two classes for Photo Week. Again, the one that we're going to watch is self-publishing with, Blur with Blurb, but you also did uh, the documentary portrait. Tell us about that one first. Uh, the documentary portrait workshop is is uh, a lot of fun because a lot of times when I when I teach and I typically teach a couple of times a year, I run into a lot of people who want to basically travel the world with a camera or a world that could be their backyard. It doesn't matter, and Photographing people is a very interesting, creates a very interesting dynamic. So a lot of times people will see someone they want to photograph and they're a little bit afraid to bridge that gap and they'll end up standing across the street or something and sniping a picture. And what the class is about is basically understanding what a portrait means and how to do them and how to bridge that gap. And it becomes a really fun part of the experience. Uh, and, you know, I shoot documentary pictures as well. So there are times when I'm photographing and I'm, I don't want to talk to anyone or, or disturb people. But when I do... There's a lot of things and a lot of tricks that you can do to make shooting portraits a lot more fun. And once you get over the idea of approaching someone that you don't know, there's a little bit of an awkwardness there. Once you get past it, it's a piece of cake and it becomes uh, a really fun part of being a photographer. Well, that is right up my alley, Dan. I think I'm going to have to rewatch that one <laughs> shortly before I go on my vacation. Uh, fantastic. Okay, so let's talk about the other course that we are going to watch about self-publishing. Yeah, I work for I work full time for Blurb now, and self publishing has exploded over the past, starting about ten years ago, and in the last five years, and namely the last two years, it's really exploded. And Blurb is a platform that came along in two thousand five, two thousand six, and really pioneered a lot of the options that you see out there today. And the upside is that photographers and and image makers and storytellers have more choices today than ever before. And so this this program really walks you through what the Blurb choices are and the options but also what it means to self-publish and not only the nuts and bolts of like, how do you actually put these things together, but what do you do with them once you have them? And a lot of times, one of the great consistencies of the people that I work with is that everybody has some sort of story to tell, whether it's my mother who writes poetry or it's myself, I'm out in the field trying to do documentary work. And it's, what do you do with these stories? How do you put them together? How do you make the most successful object that you can make? And then who do you show it to? How do, how do you sell it? Where do you position it, et cetera? And with all of these choices comes a lot of options, and I'm just trying to navigate that for people so that it doesn't seem so uh, overwhelming. That's really cool. I mean, even, like you said, self-publishing, blowing up, even children. Children are, are putting together books that you can print. So I think it's, it's really cool. Excited to watch that one again, too. 
not only, you know, I have a, a little boy that I used to photograph and shoot portraits of, and he's an actor up in Hollywood now, and he does his own books, but also the actual genre of children's books is exploding as well. And there's a lot of children's book authors that use blurb. So oh, everything, cool. I mean, it's exciting. It's the most exciting time in, in publishing, I think, in a long, long time. I agree. I agree. So you teach uh, about blurb as well, but tell, tell me what is kind of one of the biggest things that people ask you? What, are, what do you find that consistently people are asking you about self-publishing? Well, self-publishing, it, it runs in two schools. You have people who are very new to publishing, who are very uh, interested and concerned about things like materials, and they always want to know what book size do I print and how many pages and what paper type. So you have sort of the nuts and bolts aspect of it. And that is important, but it is far less important than people imagine. And the, se the second school are people who are more attuned to photography, editing, sequencing, putting things together, and they want to know how to sell books. Right. Everyone wants to get their story out. They want to sell. They want to be relevant. So the questions are typically broken into those two. What what book size? And, and people assume that the largest book with the most amount of pages is, is what they should do. And in some cases, that's absolutely correct. And in other cases, you can make the smallest book with the fewest pages and it can have even more of an impact. So I work with a lot of different ranges of people from people from the novice to the to the experienced. And about the the second part about selling, what is what is sort of the the quick answer that you ask when people ask you about, but how do I how do I get noticed? How do I sell these things? Yeah, the catchphrase of the day is discoverability because everybody's out there with their messages. Um, and my philosophy about this is a little bit different than the mainstream. I think you hear a lot about social media and about promoting. And I do think that obviously people have to know about the work. But really, it's people are interested in the author as much as they are in the actual work. So it's about what you share with who, and it's developing a following of people that you can influence and educate even before the book is a reality. So a lot of people will come to me and say, the book is done, now what do I do? And my response is always, if, if no one knows about it and it's already done, you've got a real uphill battle. So I try to educate people and let them in on what I'm doing as I go along. But I'm also a big fan of long form communication in a world that's somewhat fixated on micro bursts of information. I, uh, I think you should really promote something when you actually have something to promote. And people have respect for that because when they see your name and they see that you're promoting something, they go, I better pay attention. Well, that, that is uh, the truth we speak here at Creative Live. I'm curious uh, about the long form uh, content for sure. I'm curious, that makes me think about community as you talk about building a community before you have something sort of to offer them. It, what is the community of Blurb like? What is your community? Well, my community and Blurb community are different. Blurb has uh, a, a massive following around the world, and that is a very diverse group of people from book designers and educators and photographers down to people like my mother who writes poetry and wants to do books of her poetry, which, of course, she forces me to make, but that's another story. Uh, and then my audience is is uh, what I would call eclectic, and it's much smaller than Blurb's audience, but I've been blogging for 12 or 13, 14 years, and I've had people that I've been following all along. So they're a very dedicated readership. So when I come out with something that I think is of interest to them, there's an audience waiting for that. Blurb's is very diverse, and it's numbers in the millions of people around the world. So it's uh, and that that's really the great thing about being any kind of photographer or image maker is you have a global audience at your fingertips and what you do with that and how you engage with it is up to you. I used to do uh, much more of the social media and earlier this year I sort of got rid of all my social media and I realized that I wanted to kind of go in an opposite direction. And so when I communicate with my audience now, it's typically in posts that are two thousand words long and that you know most people say oh my god you can't do that but i think it's very interesting and the people that will sit through a 2000 word post are are dedicated absolutely those those are your true fans that is your tribe that's cool i like that's the way you're, you're flipping that uh, let's talk about your projects what what then are you working on these days uh, I'm working on so many different things. I, uh, at the end of 2010, when I stopped working full time as a photographer, I really had a chance to get some distance between being a photographer and what I really wanted to do. And when you work full time as a photographer, you have a different set of responsibilities. And suddenly I didn't have those anymore. And I was left to my own devices in terms of what I actually wanted to do. 
And I started to work on very, uh, for the first time in my life, really conceptual pieces. And I just had these sort of strange ideas in my head that I thought would manifest themselves in book form. And they were completely different than the traditional documentary work that I'd been doing. So I started a series of these books and began to discover that other forms of, of artwork, so black ink on paper illustrations and doing the, and, and really like painting with acrylics and still doing photography, but kind of mixing them all together. I'd never done any of this. I have absolutely no artistic ability. I've had to like scratch tooth and nail to like find any kind of thing that I'm capable of doing. And so I do that, but at the same time, I'm still working on long-term projects, and I've also um, volunteered for uh, an NGO project, a non-governmental organization project that's based out of Los Angeles, and I'll be going to uh, Nicaragua in May to teach 14 to 17-year-old kids how to tell stories and then how to take their story and get it out into the world. So we have uh, trips coming up to Mexico and Bolivia and Malawi and all these other places. So between Blurb and the NGO and my own projects, I'm, I'm overbooked. What is that NGO called, Nan? Where can we find out more information about that? It's the Frederick Roberts Photography Workshops. And Fred Roberts is a photographer based in LA who does a lot of philanthropic work. And uh, Fred approached me at the end of last year and said, hey, what do you think about doing this? And uh, he's compiled a really interesting group of people that go and teach. And so I will be, uh, uh, the next mission is Nicaragua at the end of May. And so I'll be, I'll be on top, tap with that. You can also find it through, through my website. That is also right up my alley. <laughs> I definitely want to find out more about that. What do you say to people who are wanting to use their photography to enable change in the world? What, what, is, what is one way to do that in addition to what you're doing? Well, I think it starts before you get to work with an NGO or, or anything like that. I think one of the most important things that it took me literally 10 years to understand, and this was 10 years of working full time as a photographer, was that individual vision or unique vision is a very real thing. Uh, those words are thrown around a lot today in the industry like candy, but it is very real. And how each one of us sees the world is like our fingerprint. It's unique. So, but that is a very difficult difficult thing to achieve and understand and also a very difficult thing to maintain. However, it is also the most important thing that you own that has value. So how you see and how I see are very different. So when you come to a project like that or you want to do something that helps the world, you need to understand that you have to come from a very personal point of view. You have to bring something that no one else is bringing. And to find what that vision is and to understand it and maintain it, it in my case it took 10 years. It may take you 10 weeks, 10 months, 10 years or whatever. Don't sweat it, but understand what it is so that when you come to the table, you're bringing something of unique value. And I think it cuts through the noise of information and the volume of information out there again, because you're going to bring something back that's going to force people to pay attention. And really in today's world, we're all fighting for attention. That's it. It's can you get someone's undivided attention? And to do that, you've got to put the best possible work in front of them. I love that. I really love that because it, it makes me think of you always though have to come back around to what is your true authentic self and your true vision and not kind of focusing on everybody else out there. Thank you. I think, I think one of the things that's really encouraging is that the idea of helping is, is become, becoming more and more a prominent part of conversations that I'm having across all walks of life at all levels is people looking around. And it's coming from especially the young demographic, I'd say 20 to 25 who are getting into photography. They, in many cases, they don't really have a lot of funding. They don't have a lot of money. They don't have a big safety net, but yet they're still concerned about really going out and helping other people. That's good to see. It's excellent to see. Well, one more quick thought uh, as we wrap this up and about to go watch your, your self-publishing um, piece. What's the latest at Blurb? Back around to Blurb. Wow. Blurb always has uh, new things going on. And the latest announcement that we made was made a couple of weeks ago. And it's in regard to offset printing. So we now have uh, offset printing capabilities in, in addition to print on demand. And these you can find these on the website. And... You can have books printed offset with minimum runs down as low as 750 books. And you can print in region, meaning in the U.S., or you can print overseas. And uh, you wait longer, pay less when you pay overseas. 
when you, when you do your books overseas. And you can also customize your books. So you've got foil stamping and debossing and embossing and banding and uh, ribbons and all kinds of customizations. And there's actually a warehousing ability at the end. So if you don't have anywhere to warehouse your books, they will warehouse the books for you. And when the books are sold, they charge you a fee per book when, when the books are sold. So anyone who is legitimately serious about self-publishing, this is a huge announcement. And, and to me, the way I look at it is the ability to do both offset and POD. So you can do your book run of 750, and then if you want to customize something or do a smaller run that accompanies the big run, you can go POD. It's the best of both worlds. It's in my time at Blurb, it's one of the most important announcements we've ever made. And just as a teaser, between now and the end of May, we have three more major announcements, which I cannot talk about, but I don't want to ruin the surprise. But uh, for anyone who's interested in self-publishing, you should stay tuned, get on the Blurb mailing list, because... By the end of May, your life will be uh, turned upside down once again. That is incredible. That is huge, huge for, for our audience here at Creative Live, but the ability to self-publish in an entirely different way, um, that's huge. Well, thank yes. you so much, Dan. Um, obviously, blurb.com is where people can go find out more about Blurb, but tell us where your blog is so that people can, can follow you as well. My blog is uh, smogranch.com, and that's S M O G and the word ranch.com. All right, Dan, thank you so much, and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you. I appreciate you having me.